Greetings from New Jersey Institute of Technology. My name is Mike Smullen. I'm the Executive Director of the Alumni Relations Office at NJIT. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's event, Women and Alumni Vested in Education and STEM, also known as WAVES. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the Chairwoman of the WAVES Alumni Group, Dolores Martinez Wooden, Class of 2005, and 2007. Dolores, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Receive my warm welcome. We are finally here and we are very, very excited to have you all and our panelists in this very, very special event. Um, first, I would like to talk a little bit about WAVES and just go over a mission statement. And I will do the cliche reading because I would like you to I would like the words in our mission statement to resonate with you and you know one of the things that you take away tonight. Uh, our mission statement at WAVES is to promote the advancement of NJIT alumni by increasing their representation and STEM careers through fostering their growth and personal success while developing a pipeline of students in support of their interest in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's pretty much our mission statement. And um, again, a warm welcome. We have a very, very awesome event planned for you guys. And uh, without further ado, I would like to bring on our panelists so they can introduce themselves. Very, very top-notch top women that we have today in this panel. Um, with outstanding careers and outstanding achievements and many more achievements to reach. Without further ado, Andrea. Good evening, everyone. My name is Andrea Lewis Walker and I am the deputy in charge of the United States District Court for the District of New Jersey. I am a NJIT proud graduate with a biomedical engineering degree that I obtained in 2002. So I'm currently not working in an engineering area. However, I'm using my engineering principles that I've learned from NJIT daily. I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the federal court, which is located in downtown Newark. And so this includes the civil and criminal case assignments to 20 judicial officers. 11 of those have been appointed by the president for life. So I'm responsible for creating policies and practices long and short-term goals. I have a staff of about 75 people. And one of the things that I enjoy the most about my job is I get to mold careers for new incoming individuals. So that I think is the most rewarding facet of my job. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Catherine. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Catherine. I graduated NJIT in 2014 and 2015 with a bachelor's and master's in biomedical engineering. Uh, I had a concentration in biomechanics. I've been working in the medical device field for the past about seven years now, and I'm currently working at Bayer as a senior manager of medical device safety, um, which what we do is, you know, for all of our medical device products out in the field, we monitor uh, the patients that are using them and making sure that our products are still uh, safe to be used. And uh, during NGIT, uh, I was a member of the women's soccer team and also part of the Honors College. So very happy to be here with everybody today. Salea. Hi, everyone. My name is Linnea Serizan. I did uh, the bachelor's at NGIT in 2016 and my executive STEM MBA in 2018. I've been with Johnson & Johnson for over 10 years in engineering and also as a data scientist for several years. Uh, currently, I'm with Bristol Myers Squibb as a manager in our new cell therapy uh, therapeutics uh, division uh, that is working towards autoimmune disease, leukemia, and HIV AIDS uh, therapeutics. Very happy to meet you all. And I've mentored many women in my career so far. Marjorie. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marjorie Perry. I'm president and CEO of MZM Construction and Management. I am a graduate of MBA in 05, and I've taken all my civil engineer classes since I'm in the construction space. 
Uh, and I am also chair of the board for First Woman of the Foundation for NJIT. So I'm a proud alum as well as continue service right now. Uh, primarily what we do is work on the environmental side. We put a lot of beach replenishment up and down the Eastern seaboard and we do a lot of infrastructure for airports and any kind of facility that requires federal support. So glad to be here. I've been mentoring for 28 years since I have been in business. Thank you. Hey, Kuella. Good evening, everyone. My name is Quavella Sproul. I graduated in 1994. Seems like so long ago. My major was environmental science. I specialized in environmental science. And right now I am the police director in the township of Franklin, that's Somerset, New Jersey. Uh, myself, like Andrea, I did not stay with my career, but I am using the engineering principles to manage um, criminal investigations and the administrative side of law enforcement. And I think we're all here to show you that no matter how you begin, you have choices, you have options. Thank you for having me tonight. Wonderful. We are very grateful to have you all. Um, I want everybody to realize, you know, the, the great diversity in, in careers in interests and um, career paths that, um, you know, that we're following. Uh, some, you know, in align with what went to NJT is some, you know, um, bloom into other interests um, that we're all very successful at. Um, without further ado, we do have some questions and encourage you to please participate. We want to make this interactive. We want to um, answer your questions, uh, you know, um, make commentary on anything that may be uh, of your interest then um, you will be finding useful for your career. So let's start with um, the question, how would I build a career, not just a job? Let's see which one of courageous panelists would like to uh, jump into this one. So I, I wanna say one of the biggest parts about working a job and then building a career is the fact that when you're working, it, you, it should not be a job. You should have fun. And one of the things I find as being a woman in almost any profession is you try to limit yourself in terms of what you do. Yes, you want to do a great job. Yes, you want to get great evaluations, but you also want to make sure that you're networking. And ladies, I know you know this, as much as we're leading the you know, breaking glass ceilings and leading the way, it's still primarily a man's world. So you have to go out there, play golf, go to the sporting events, um, go to those cigar events, you know, the non-contemporary events that exist out there. Because I always say this at work, decisions and plans are not made in the, um, I'll, I'll say the boardroom. They usually are made on that golf course. A lot of networking occurs. So I think that is one of the things you have to make sure you're doing. It's just like they tell you in college, you just can't go to class. You have to get involved with some committees and some social events and also volunteer, you know, make sure you're part of the different things that they're doing at your job outside of work, giving back to the community. So I guess we can say that being present being present, I'm sure that we all heard, be in the room, be, be in the uh, uh, conference room table, but it doesn't stop there, right? Yes, Linnea. I, I, I want to elaborate a little bit on that because uh, being a young woman uh, engineer uh, working in pharmaceuticals, you know, when I first started off, I, uh, I was a little bit nervous being at those big conference tables with the men who had all of those years of experience of work. And at times, you know, especially as uh, technical women, we get a, we're a little bit shy, could be introverted, right? So it, it took me a little bit of time to be able to voice my opinion. And one of my great mentors, who was a woman, she came up to me and she said, you know, Linnea, you're, you're, you're smart, but you have to be able to voice your opinion. I said, but all these men have so many years of experience. And she said, it doesn't matter because those people that are all around that conference table, they want to hear your voice. So don't be shy, have confidence, be confident woman. You know, so even if you know you have a, a, everything going up in your head 
and you might think, oh, I'm a little bit shy. Oh, everyone knows everything else. Just say it. Just do it. Because everyone wants to hear your opinion. So don't be shy. <laughs> I totally agree. And, and Linnea, you said something very important. You mentioned the word mentor. And, and, and that brings me actually to my second question. Um, how do you think an audience can go about finding a mentor? And not just a mentor, but the right mentor for their, you know, their immediate need in their career and long term. Mm -hmm. Well, I think first of all, um, so I, I've been very successful in my career because of mentors and sponsors. Uh, I think, you know, when you go and approach a mentor, you have to first understand your own career goals and, and develop somewhat of an elevator speech to be prepared for your potential mentor. So something that I like to resonate to the audience is what we call SMART goals, right? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. What are your goals in your personal and career development? So, you know, when, when you're looking at people, you have to understand who is in your organizational network and who you can identify to be the right fit for you. Now, they could be the right fit. But also, it's great to find those that are not the right fit because you are able to leverage their skills and their unique experiences. So when you try to find someone, first off, take notes about who is in your organization and, and what the, that path that person is taking to where they are right now. Right? right. So, so, so I guess in a way you have to um, invest some time to know what is it that you're looking for. Correct. And um, at the same time, make sure that that person does, it, it is a match. What do you think, Marjorie? What do you, what do you think about this? Uh? Well, you know, I'm going to be the outlier here. So let me just say this. Most times you don't even know what you're looking for before you're looking for it, before you're looking for it. Let's just be clear. If you're a recent graduate or you're about to graduate, you have no clue whether you're going to have a career or a job. That's number one. Right now, most students are coming out of school are looking for a job. They don't even know they want to build a career yet. <laughs> so just, you know, let's just figure that out first. So don't worry about it if you're not real clear, because you may think you want to be a civil engineer and decide you want to be an environmental engineer three years from now. It just, it, it, it's, walking the tightrope for the first couple of years. And then the other part, when you ask the question about a mentor, I've been mentoring for a long time. I'm watching as much as you're watching me. What are you bringing to the table? What can I be of added value to your life? So I think mentoring is also depends. Uh, some people here on the panel are working in very large corporations. I meet a lot of students that graduate from NJIT that are working in maybe a six person construction mm -hmm. company and they're the first time project manager. So they may not have the luxury of that. So mentoring to me is twofold. Look for the person that you admire the most. If you like the way they operate, if you have some real specific core values, and that's what I try to teach, understand what a core value is and that person kind of matches your core value and they execute and they're consistent, that's someone you may want to approach if you're not in a large corporate environment. So those are my two takeaways from being a little bit of the outlier that uh, don't want to scare anybody like, oh my God, I got to figure out what I got to do as soon as I get off the clock. <laughs> yes, Andrea, Andrea. Okay, I'm just going to piggyback on what uh, Marge has said also, and I agree with that. You know, a lot of times you have to figure out what your goals are and what the organizational goals are, because you could have these great aspirations. But if your company isn't going that direction, it's all right. for naught. Mm -hmm. So if I'm thinking in terms of building a career and mentoring, it's all based on networking. A lot of times it's not just what you know, but who you know. Mm -hmm. And I know you, most of you have heard that term before, and I hate to say it, but it is true. So when you're looking in terms of look finding a mentor, I agree, someone that you admire, and it doesn't necessarily have to be someone at your company. It could be someone on the outside, whether it's someone at NJIT, or I also highly recommend getting involved with community service and with other boards you can sit on. I don't know if you can see these pins I got on, but I purposely did this. You know, I know there was a column for sororities. If you're in a sorority, reach out to your sorority or other people in Greek life. In addition to that, um, I'm a member of the United Way board. 
Um, that's one of the ways that I met Marge. We were both honored a couple of years ago for Women's History Month. So um, that's an ongoing network. I don't talk to her every day, but I'm sure if I pick up the phone, it's going to be wonderful. Like we haven't missed a beat. Right. In, in addition to that, when you're on these other boards, you're you're learning, you're hearing things. And if someone is looking for a person with a certain skill set, they're going to think about who they've had conversations with. Not necessarily that resume that came across their desk from, you know, those other engineering schools that are nowhere near as good as NJIT. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to keep all of that in consideration. And also, don't just look for upward mobility. Think about some lateral moves because you could be, you know, one kind of a salary and then you want to look at another aspect of your company. There's nothing wrong with that. I have hopped around in a lot of different areas with the courts. I started out in IT, became their IT manager, wanted a little bit more responsibility. So I came over to operations. It's not as technical, but because I have that skill set, I have my hands still in IT and everywhere else, finance, procurement, everything. So um, the, the, the world is, is at your feet, basically, right. but networking <laughs> is key. Networking is that's crazy. right, mm -hmm. and and awareness because if you don't if you don't you know if you take for granted that you have the opportunities around you, um, it's really you know it, it's really tough to to go for those for those opportunities. Um, but I want to key into something that you said. Um, you, you mentioned goals and skills. Now um, there's a question from Ellen, um, one of our audience members, that they ask part of the skills. What do you wish you learned at NGIT that maybe you know. It, it, you think back now and you're like, I wish I, I would have known this when I was in school. That's a tough I, one. Like, well, <laughs> for me, I can say, I wish I had continued on and maybe got an executive something or another before stopping. Um, because, you know, the more education you have, uh, the better it is. I mean, and time passes anyway. So if you can take those extra classes and get a, other certifications, that's, that's extremely important. So Education, education, however you can get it, that's that's something extra that I would do. Even if I have to get some more student loans, I mean, it's worth it. <laughs> well, I, you know, really I want to say what I wish I had to learn, especially being an African-American woman, no one taught me how to do network. That's a good point. There's yeah. nothing in school, you know, <laughs> that we drop that word like it's a buzzword, network, network. Yeah. No one mm -hmm. taught me how to network. Right. And if I had to do it all over again, I would teach a class on networking, how to right. approach, what do you do? What do you say? How do you engage right. that person? How do you find out what that hot button is for that person? Right. That you yep. Yep. Because they're not interested if you can't catch their attention in five or 10 right. minutes to right. keep the engagement of the conversation. So if I had to teach a class today or go back to school, there would be soft skills because it's a soft skill on how to network because mm -hmm. most engineers are very introverted. Yes. They are not most extroverted. Right. So here we are, you're yeah. standing in a room with 40 people and you're like, oh yes, I graduated NJT. <laughs> what next? <laughs> yes. Now what? Yes. So, right. I think that, you know, when you're coming out of STEM programs, they're introverted and you there's gotta right. be something more soft skill that I'd say senior year that is on the table that they could take an elective on how do you network and just role play and just right. get up and just play the scenarios right. out. I you know? agree. So I, I gotta agree. tell you, nobody teaches you that. They just say do right. it, but they don't teach you. And you know what, Marjorie, piggybacking off of that, I wish someone had also sat down and talked to us about finances because I, I don't know how jobs are now, but I can tell you this, I was very lucky when I came out of NGIT. I mean, I was getting paid I mean, I was complaining about what I was getting paid. And my mom was like, are you kidding me? You're making a great salary. But no one sat down and talked to you. These are your prospects. This is what you're worth, um, you know, when you go out there in the job market. Because we are valuable. Because we are those unicorns. We are those diamonds in the rough, That's you right. know? That's right. Yeah, and I and Q, just to answer what you just said, the other thing is that everyone should know law and finance. Yes. Because if you don't know the law, then you don't even know how much money you can make. And yes. I find that uh, all my mentees, I make them take a finance class. So I agree with you 100 percent on finance and understanding how to read legal documents, because everything is predicated on that legal document, yes. which can make or break you financially, especially if you're an entrepreneur track. So with, with, with that said, I want to hone in on soft skills because a lot of people get hung up on the technical 
uh, like we say, the book, you know, the book skills, like you can read it in any book, right? Soft skills are very, very, um, if you are a shy person, it, it, it's very hard to get into that, you know, um, the role of being Dolores, not, they're not only shy, a person, they are introverted. They're not shy. Most of the time they are introverted. Engineers tech te technically are introverted people. Right. So, 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 with, so with that, I just want to make sure we're clear on shy versus introverted because, you know, when I give an engineer something to do, they've just gone doing it. Zoom, 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 zoom task driven. So they're not shy at all. They just have mm -hmm. nothing to say. I got a job to do, you know? So just I just want to be, clarify that, that I, I have met some amazing folks with an engineering background, but they're the worst people to talk to sometimes yeah. because they have nothing to say. <laughs> so, so, so going back to that, because there is, um, there's a question here. Um, how can you build confidence at work which i think aligns with what we're talking about right how do you build confidence um is it fake it till you make it or something else that's yeah, one of my pet things i don't like that statement but let's go for it i'm a newer girl yes fake it till you make it yes absolutely. me too marjorie absolutely but you know what that's why you need women like us to also let you know that guess what? You do have that strength. It took me a long time to realize how powerful and how intelligent I was because mm -hmm. people would tell me that, but I wouldn't believe it. And you have to absorb that and you have to realize, okay, I graduated from one of the most difficult technical schools in New Jersey. Yes. Fact. You didn't just do that by chance. Like, ladies, you have the potential to like do. Listen, look at us. We're, we didn't. We started off here, and people hired us just on idea. I remember going to buy my first car at the Acura dealer, and I go in. I have no credit, and the guy says, um, "I said, yeah, but I'm working here. I have a job here, and I graduated from NGIT." And he goes, "Anyone who graduated from NGIT is not leaving here without a car." <laughs> so listen you have to realize like my mother always used to say you dress the part you want to be, to be you don't dress uh -huh. the job you have you dress where you want to be so i i think that comes into play too i'm oh, sorry yeah. i think Catherine has something no, yeah, to say. I, <laughs> this literally came up in a discussion today for me so this is very fresh i was talking to my boss about trying to build that confidence and i think there is something to be said about building a network where you are you know having the, those mm -hmm. allies you know whether it's in the cubicle next to you or somebody in a different department that you're checking in with so you can have these honest conversations and i think if, if you really want to overcome it versus just put it to the side, you have to address what the root of it is. Right. You know, so for me, the conversation is, you know, I'm, I'm not at that comfortable yet with the content matter. And, you know, now that's something that we can work on together. And that's building trust in that, you know, you're going to talk it out when, you know, something is difficult and you're going to get over it together. And then you build that history. So when you talk about building a career versus a job, when they become invested in you, that's when they're going to, that's right. you know, keep you moving and help you get to where you want to go. So I, I think there is something to be said for, you know, not every, you don't need to broadcast it to everybody and say, hey, I'm uncomfortable about this. You, you just need to find somebody that you can trust and they will, you know, point you in the right direction. And then when you have that pin in your stomach where it's like, I'm very uncomfortable, you're halfway there. And then you have to keep working through the hurdle. Don't back away from it. Don't say, you know, give this project to somebody else because it's not in my wheelhouse make it part of your wheelhouse, you know, keep building on your skill set, find the right people to connect with, learn from other people. And that's how you become confident in it the next time around. And you keep moving forward. You can't keep moving forward if you stay stuck on one thing and you're afraid, you know, to fail or to, you know, put yourself in a position where you feel like you can't. So that would be my one thing about confidence. Yeah. And you know what, Catherine, I, I always say that fail forward, you know, failing, Yes, it's absolutely essential to build confidence. Yes. And most people, the reason why they are insecure or they're uncomfortable is they're afraid of failing. That's the biggest thing. They're afraid of failing. And I'm saying, you know, go ahead and fail. Get it over with, you know, get criticized and don't think that's a death sentence. It is something for you to grow and to learn from. So I just wanted to piggyback off of, you know, failing is really good. In the first few years, you're going to do a lot of that in order to get to the next steps that you have to go to. Yeah. So, so I, let's shift a little bit. I'm sorry. Did, did you somebody else have a comment? No. You know, I just had a quick comment. I had a young lady who um, I was chief at the time and she was a uh, lieutenant 
maybe a sergeant, lieutenant. And uh, one of the young men, I sent her to a train the trainer class where she was gonna train thousands of other police officers in the t um, county. And one of the other deputy chiefs, a male came to me and says, she's uncomfortable about doing this training. She doesn't want to do it. And I'm like, well, we paid all this money to get her trained to do it. She has to do it. So I said, bring her into me. And they're like, you want to talk to her? Cause you know, chain of command in this line of work is like the chief wants to talk to a lieutenant or a sergeant right now. I'm like, yes, bring her in. And I brought her in and I said, do you realize you are the next highest ranking African-American female in this building after me? And she goes, I, I never thought of it like that. I said, well, you better start thinking about it. I said, so whatever we got to do to get through this, you want me to sit there in your first class with you when you train these men and women, I'll do it with you. But you have to start thinking like that. So that's the other part. You have to see where are you in the organization in terms of everyone else around you. It is a competition somewhat. It is. But does that speak to it also, Q, that people should not worry about what other people think about them either? Absolutely. Just do well, it. That, you know, and that's yeah. the other that's the other holdback. I don't want people to not like me or et cetera. So they're not mm -hmm. going to like you, especially if you're starting to rise. They're just not mm -hmm. going to like you. Get over it. Trust me. Yes. yes. <laughs> I trust so, me as well. For sure. <laughs> so, talking about, um, you know, the skills that you need to to have in the conversations and mentorship and all. Um, there's a question here uh, from Sh San Janeta. Um, she was asking, how do you start current in your field? So now, now you're in, right? How do you stay current? in your field and how important are certifications and continuing education? I think we touched upon continuing education a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you stay current? How do you stay current? Catherine, there, how do you stay current? There, there's no getting around it. You're constantly educating, educating, educating. I, I mean, every every six months I'm taking a class, maybe on leadership or emotional uh, IQ. It, you know, there, there is no stopping. It's, it's constant because the game could change every six months to a year. You don't have a choice. You have to continue to take continuing education. You can't get around it. You'll become right. irrelevant. And, and that's something where, you know, if you have a good relationship with somebody in your office, you ask them, hey, what are you doing? It's all about sharing information. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't have that resource, you know, what I used to do is I looked at LinkedIn. There's, you know, tons of stuff coming down yeah. the feed. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I'm looking at a, a job that I want, I'll look at the bottom of the description and if there's, you know, a regulation that I don't know, you go on YouTube and there's tons of mini tutorials that right. break it down into the real, you know, just like the high level, like grasp of, of what it is that this is trying to do and how you do it. And then when you go in the job interview, you have a conversational knowledge about it. Uh, so just little things like that, where even if you don't have that person to, you know, tap into, you know, there's a lot of information from the, you know, the job descriptions and, and the LinkedIn feeds out there that you can tap into on your own. So following up um, this question, and, and it's and now it's a little more, more of, um, I, I would say, outside of, of, of our careers, um, work-life balance. I'm sure that, you know, we are all familiar with the term and it might be evolving nowadays, but how, how do we stay balanced? And um, I believe uh, Sanjanita it, it also uh, posed this question for us. I'm never balanced. <laughs> <laughs> I have to force balance on myself. You have to schedule yourself in. Yeah. So um, do you feel almost like, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound masochist, but it's almost like being unbalanced a little bit keeps you on your toes, right? Um, balance almost sometimes it, 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 it may feel to some, uh, maybe like they're settled, you know, you want to keep going and keep going. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, there has to be, right? Um, yeah, it I'm does. Just focus on your driving force. What is it that you're trying to accomplish and so on? So I, I raised, I tell people I raised two kids. Well, I'm still raising them. I'm sorry, 15 and 18. <laughs> um, you know, while, you know, rising through, you know, the lat going up the ladder in my career and you know being married and you know what i did it and people used to say to me so how do you do this i'm like i want it all you know i want a family i want kids i want a great career you know and i, I think you know what marjorie you're right you just have to schedule it in um i force myself to sometimes take a break my mind doesn't turn off 
but I'm in a different location. <laughs> you know, I'll wake up and look at the beach and go online and look at my emails and everything. But, you know, you're always, I always say you're always on. And I could tell you the only times that I've been down um, is probably when I had my two kids and I had one surgery. <laughs> That's for two weeks. And otherwise, you're always on. And I, I hate to. I hate to say it, um, you just have to be healthy about it. You have to have humor. You have to know, you know, have a network of friends and family that you can relax and vent to and talk to. Otherwise, you know, it's just, it's just part of life. It is. We signed up for this, right? Up. It's like we say, we have many hats, and one of our hats should be to put it down on the table, right? And, and, and well, we're all type A personalities, and we like to execute. We like to finish what we take on. We like to make sure it gets done. So it's easy to keep going. So I, I you know, you have to schedule yourself in. Yeah. You know, you I, I think it's one of the skills, really. I think I think it, it should be one of our skills that we should work on ourselves. If we find ourselves on a constant roll, it should be a skill for us to kind of not pump the brakes because we never want to stop. Um, but you know, somehow um, take take a breather while you're in action, right? And 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 keep going. So I have another question. Um, what advice would you give to someone who feels stuck at their job? And how how do you get motivated? Um, what do you what do you think, Linnea? Yeah, I was about to ask this uh, answer this one. So um, I have been with the same company for uh, over a decade, right? And I was always so scared to leave this company, but you know what? It's okay. It's all right because we're brilliant women. We have a lot of potential. We have a lot to give. Put yourself out there. Do not be scared to put yourself out there and to leave your comfort zones and, and, and to reach out of your window of, of comfort and tolerance. Uh, so if you want to you know, try to go into a different career, that is perfectly fine. That's perfectly understandable. Have that confidence to do so. Um, it took a lot for me to leave an engineering field to go into a data science field and then to go into cell therapy research and especially management. Um, of course, I had uh, complimented myself with certain certificates, but it's all about having the confidence to be able to make that jump. And if you can make that jump, then you can believe in yourself and you can do it. I agree a hundred percent. I also Anybody think would like to go ahead, Andrea. I'm sorry. I also think it's the responsibility of the employee and the employer um, to make sure people are in the right positions. Because if you think if you're in a C-suite or you're a senior manager, you want all of your employees to be productive. That takes some of that everyday weight off of you. So, I mean, that's one of the things that I've, think is like top priority, people first, and the work is secondary. So if you're feeling stuck, um, that's up to you individually as well to say, okay, Absolutely. what else do I need to do? Do I need to go somewhere else? Um, and and take that, that leap of faith. You know, sometimes you know for yourself, okay, I've been here long enough. I've learned everything. There's nothing else for me to do. It's time to move on. Because if right. you don't, you'll be there another five to 10 years still feeling the same way. And that's not healthy. That's right. That's exactly Just, right. Yeah. A quick, a quick note to that. Um, speaking up, if you feel stuck, whether it's your mentor or, you know, somebody that you feel comfortable with, um, you know, how, how do you feel about where you are at that moment in time and uh, proactively parallel, right? We do want to be, proactive and move forward um, to find uh, uh, um, what doors do we have available or open, not necessarily open because we have to open our own doors sometimes, but available. Um, but I think it starts with, um, you know, actually speaking up. What, what do you really think? Well, you know, let me just say this. I want to go back to the original part of the question. If you're stuck, why you need to know why you're stuck. That's a very good point. OK, I think when a person is stuck, they're sometimes looking for excuses for why things aren't moving. Be clear on why you're stuck, because type A personalities typically don't stay stuck for long. Mm. They're like, OK, what's next? What's next? What's next? So if you're stuck, then why? What are you afraid of? 
what can happen talking, you know, what you were talking about, Liness, um, Lene. And um, I always say that when I'm stuck with something, it's just because I lost my way on what my bigger purpose was, mm -hmm. or the purpose is too small. And you may have to expand the purpose because there is always dry seasons in the middle of a career move. So is it really stuck or is it a dry season or is the purpose now you've outgrown it and you need to have a bigger purpose to be reaching for it? Because that's what continues to pull you is that purpose. So I just wanted to add to that. To that. So pretty much is realigning your purpose, right? You're not necessarily stuck. You're just realigning yourself. Realign what's the purpose? You know, where did you see yourself five years from now, 10 years from now? You know, what, what, and did you, did you write it out? And if you didn't write out, write out where did you see yourself in five years and if now that'll tell you if you're stuck yes marjorie okay. i i i have to sorry i have to jump in because i that's one of the things that like i said i i, I focus on um how you call it investing on myself like i tell anybody that would listen if you feel stuck or if you feel like you know there's no doors open and you want to move or whatever it is that you you know you don't feel that you are where you're supposed to Invest in yourself. Take five minutes. Go have a cup of coffee with yourself. Realign your purpose. Make Rock that five, cranberry 10, for me. What's coffee. that? Rock and cranberry for me. <laughs> <laughs> Tea or, you know, an adult beverage. Adult <laughs> beverage. No, on, a, on a serious note, I think that is very important. I think that a lot of us um, invest in so many things and put our mind into so many things. But in reality, Sometimes we don't take those five minutes that it takes to say, okay, what do I want? Right. You know, what, what's making me feel this way? Um, and, um, you know, uh, what do I do? What do I want to do now? I mean, it is how many years ago since I graduated, right? It's okay. It's okay. Um, you know, life is so long sometimes. Like, you don't, you don't want to just feel like, wait a minute, it, like you said, it should be a flag. It should be a flag that says flag. realign. Should, right. And you know mm -hmm. what? And I don't mean to cut back in on you, Dolores, but I just graduated from Harvard uh, in December uh, from the business school. And, and, uh -huh. and when I, and I just say this for the audience out there, I, you know, I wasn't interested in going back to school and getting another MBA from anywhere, but um, I was recruited to do Harvard business school because they don't have a lot of brown and Latina, uh, brown and black students going through the business school, not Harvard, but the business school. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of the things, the first thing that I found, and if I could just live this, leave this little seed in Tibet, I went up there thinking I, 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 my purpose was huge. That's why I brought that up. I got up there. My purpose must have been a thimble because when I got there, they blew my mind completely open to say, you know what? You're thinking way too small. And mm. that was such an energizing moment for me because I'm sitting next to these billionaires and this, this guy owes a $500 million business. And because their dream was, it was just, it was so huge. No boundaries. Thank you. Right. So Andrea talked about education. Q talked about it. Linnea talked about it. Catherine, of course, you know, I remember Catherine because she was on, she was, you know, she was at the uh, function for us at NGIT when I received my award. Um, most of the time we're thinking too small when we're stuck. If I don't leave any other tidbit, we're thinking too small and that's why you're stuck and think about a bigger purpose. And there's no limit to that purpose. Just think about it. And what would you do if you had all the money, all the resources, all the contacts, all the net, and just dream? You know, so I just wanted to share that. So if anybody wants to take that tidbit, they can use it. Think bigger. Dolores, I want this next question. <laughs> What's that? About mentoring high school students. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I start at middle school. I'm on the board at NGIT for the Center for Pre-College Programs. And that's where we got to start to get our young women interested because yep. they got to get those math and science skills up to par. And that's what um, the Center for Pre-College Programs is all about. There's an entire summer program that starts from middle schoolers, mm -hmm. actually sixth grade on up. Right. That helps the kids in all different disciplines. And another way for them to know about engineering, go to some of these schools for their career day. Don't shy yep. away from that. Absolutely. They love, love, love to hear from you. And I also go to some of the elementary schools in the city of Newark 
and talk about what I do in NJIT. Yep. And you should see their their eyes, they just light up with excitement. Like, how do you do that? You're a girl. You know, you hear all kind of um, interesting things. <laughs> I didn't because, know you were a girl, Angie. Right, because when you're <laughs> late, that's mainly um, dominated by men. I mean, yeah. and one nice thing about NGIT, I don't know about anybody else's experience in classrooms, but if you're absent, the professor knows it. You can't hide. Yeah. You're you're up there in front. So, um, and I know that's what helped build my confidence. Like, okay, I'm here. Yes, you got a question. I'm going to answer it. I'm going to be ready. Um, yeah. So that that's one other thing for mentoring our younger people because when we're retired and on a beach somewhere in the Bahamas. Who's going to do our jobs? You know, so we have to reach around and pull other people along with us. So mentoring, not just our peers or those that are younger, you know, in careers, but our kids. Very, very important. I'm going to I'm going to tie something together. We had a couple of questions and I think I can put them together. So one of the questions was, um, you know, how can we recruit more women to STEM? And also, um, you know, the, the, you mentor high school. So there are 1700 undergrad women it shouldn't stop uh, you know I, 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 with us right um the person already a college student you'll be surprised how many um younger people would like to to hear from you mm -hmm. 1700 mm -hmm. uh, female students at njit one of them is going to change a life right if they walk into a classroom go to your former class uh, your former high school go to your former elementary um mm -hmm. You will see, and, and it's so rewarding because I've, I've done it myself, Andrea. Um, you know, just they light up, they light up, mm -hmm. and, and seeing that spark in a younger person. Um, that you know, one time I show up with my hard hat and vest, and they thought I was a crossing guard, and I'm like, But a crossing guard doesn't wear a hard hat, it doesn't have these boots, <laughs> you know. And I was explaining to them, but it's that right there was a moment of education, and that right there was a spark not only for the you know the introverted but also the person that asked the question so you know you will make a difference walking into a classroom i think that's a wonderful question walking to into a classroom um you know it, but can we add on here. to that because what we're struggling especially in the inner cities because you know i i've adopted two high schools in newark the curriculum has got to change and we've got to figure out how to mentor them in math yes mm. That's yes. the real, when you want to talk about what's the pain point, yeah, they're all interested, but they can't do the math. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also we might have the demographic of the 1700 women in NJIT, but as, a, as the board chair, I know we lose them after their sophomore year because they can't get across the threshold with the math. Yeah. So, you know, I always want to throw that out as alum you know, how can not only do we go in for the day and mentor, but how do we actually have remedial classes on the math so that they can stay and not, you know, quit after their second year. It's very tough the junior and senior year uh, at NJIT uh, on the math side. Uh, and that's the constant, uh, you know, reach back that we're trying to figure out how to get more people on campus to work with the high school students to make yeah. sure that they can get math prepared to do the mm -hmm. quantitative analysis that they have to do to become even an engineer of any sort. Yeah. We can be a bridge, but you know, they got to cross it. Right. Mm -hmm. Got to have those skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got to have the, those skills. Mm -hmm. Can I say, Dolores, someone asked about um, um, NGIT pre-college and Ozzy Williams. And I, I think I shared this story with you guys, but my one of my first jobs working at NJIT was a teacher assistant for pre-college. And I met so many students. They start from um, 10th grade, no, actually seventh grade, sorry, seventh grade through 12th grade. And that I believe was one of those inspiring moments because they saw us, we were freshmen, sophomores and juniors at NJIT. And a lot of them actually, um, were admitted to NJIT because they were on campus, they were familiar with it, and they felt comfortable. And we taught them SAT prep, um, mm -hmm. like algebra, calculus. I mean, I was a math teacher, tutor, then teacher. And I think that was great for them to see us. And it, it was several of us, young people that went to NJIT that worked those jobs. So very familiar with Izzy Williams. He's been around a long time. Um, great guy. And that's what they do, they take the students from um, the area and they let them, you know, 
learn that they can do it. I think it's just that confidence. It is. That's, I mean, again, you know, being being present, being present, because it, it, at one point, it, it doesn't become about you anymore, right? Um, it becomes a, things like what we're doing tonight, right? It, it's, it's not about just uh, g having a, a bright career and so on, but who are you, who are you, you know, taking this, this trip with? Who are you, you know, um, we always say, let's support women, let's elevate each other. Well, yeah. let's elevate each other, right? I think that it's time to just start saying it, stop saying it, right? And start doing it. And again, don't limit yourself. At this point, for example, for the students, you don't have to have a degree to elevate another um, at this point, right? You are where you are. And you can look back and somebody might have the same struggles that you had at that point in time. One conversation can change their life. So there's always room for mentorship. There's always room to, to open, you know, some eyes to their possibilities. Mm -hmm. And going off of that, you know, I'm so passionate about mentoring because I know that I'm just one person that this, that somebody's going to interact with. I'm a data point. And the more data that you have, the more informed you're going to be about your own decisions. You're going to take a little piece of me. You're going to take a little piece from all of us on this panel tonight. And the more that you go out there and you you seek out, you know, these types of events and then you take that and you give it to somebody else in return. So, you know, don't keep this information to yourself. Look to, you know, the person next to you. Who am I going to tell next? And that's how, you know, this information really starts to spread. And then you see, you know, this greater yeah. movement. So from my perspective, I just want somebody to see a path forward, not the path forward. You're going to do you're going to do some type of variation or spin on, you know, everything that you're collecting for yourself. And I think that would be the biggest motivation for you to go out there and be a mentor to somebody else is to say, you know, who am I going to influence today? Who am I going to, you know, just put a little bit closer in the right direction? You don't need to do the whole thing. You know, that's that's what we're all here for. Everybody's going to do their part. But you know, that's that's something that I hope everybody thinks about. And, you know, where am I going next with this information that I have? Okay. So I have a quick question um, from our, 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 pan, uh, our, our attendees. Um, so there are some students from high school that would like to take a year off. Um, I guess, how, how do they um, stay in contact? How do they stay current for that amount of time that they may need to take off? Okay. <laughs> it's very hard. All right. All right. All right. So I have a, well, a senior. I have a senior. Let's say that. He just graduated last week. So proud of him. But congratulations. <laughs> that thank is you. one of I, your I always, um, achievements too. Yes, definitely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I give him credit, but it's one of my achievements because trust me, boys are different. And I would say go to a community college. Um, you may want to take off, you know, but always stay waiting in the water a little bit. Don't just stop. Don't stop going to school. Um, and I've told, I, I went through this with one of my cousins who felt like after high school, she was done. And I said, you know what, do the, do a favor for me. Take two classes. I'll pay for one. You pay for one at mm -hmm. the community college just to, you know, stay engaged and, you know, just know, you know, you're, you're refocused. And it's just about being around certain people too, staying in that environment. I, I know everyone does not have to go to college. Everyone does not need to get a degree to be successful. There's a lot of people out there that do it. But I, I think when you're that young, I don't think you quite know what you want. You know, there's so many options. So I, I would just say, you know what? Yeah, maybe you don't want to enroll full time. You know, take a class, something you think you're interested in. Right. I, I wouldn't just say, I'm just taking off for that year. I, I would not. Unless you got like an MBA, MB, not MBA, but NBA contract <laughs> for several million dollars. <laughs> Go ahead, Lania. Yeah, can I just point out, I actually went to community college. I started off at Middlesex Community College because the first two years, it's, you know, uh, all the same. I had to pay for my own college. Uh, my family was not fortunate enough to kind of help me out. Um, I thought about taking a break, uh, 
I did a cosmetology license and I worked at a hair salon uh, during the day and I went to uh, classes at night. That's not so, a Linnea. You did good. <laughs> you kept going. So, you know, you, you just you make it work. You make right, it work. Right. It just food for thought. The year you're taking off may extend to a year and a half, may extend to two or three. And those year and a half, two or three, your peers, what do they have under their belts already? On I would say under their tool belt, right? I do construction. So what do they have under their tool belt now that you won't have? So maybe you can balance, right? You find a way to balance. Like Danea, you know, she she did all you know the beauty school and, and working this on. It's another skill. It's a backup. You know, it's something that you can use. Um, we do have a few more minutes. So um, um, any other uh, comments that our panelists may have? Any other um, questions from our attendees, from our audience? I think something that, um, especially for people who are currently looking for jobs, you may be um, onboarding remotely and working with people virtually. Um, so I've been working uh, at Bayer for about a year now, and I've never met anybody in the office. Um, you know, all of my calls are, you know, uh, you know, online. Um, and you have to really make sure that your your interactions count. You know, make sure that you ask somebody how their day is, right? Because they're they're probably snowballing meetings one after the other. So just a little bit of a personal touch is going to set you apart. And you know, um, something that my team is doing, we call it seventh inning stretches. And you take 15 minutes to 30 minutes out of your day and you just talk about something other than work. Um, so if there is, you know, somebody that, you know, if you're currently working virtually and you feel like you're kind of craving a little bit more of that social aspect and trying to build your network, you know, just ping them and say, hey, you know, I'd love to just, you know, talk and get to know you a little bit better. When is a good time for you? Put a little bit of initiative in and you'll know right away who's receptive and who, you know, who may not be, but you know, that's okay. You know, I think uh, you have to get a little creative in these times and I think it'll go a long way for, you know, like you said, building your network, building your career. And yeah. then when you get in that office, you know, you and the hundred other people who start a remote, you're, they're gonna know something a little bit more about you. So that right. would be something for, for anybody who might be in that situation. This is an interesting point, Catherine, because um, finding commonalities, I think that bonds us, right? Um, I mean, we are human. We are we we crave that social aspect, um, and we spend a lot of time at work, right? So I think conversations like that, um, you can have, you can find so much value to them, um, you know, because again, you you oh, you like golf? Oh, I like golf. You know, oh, you swim? I swim. You know, and and, and those you start building not not more than your network, but you know those skills. Oh, that's that's John, and he likes to golf. And that person will appreciate that it's not just John from accounting. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's my coworker, John. He likes to golf. And one day we'll go, you know, when things uh, settle down, where we can go in and play some golf or something along those lines. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Um, I just have one quick okay. I'm sorry, Tania. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I, you know, I was, I'm corporate trained. I've worked for 3M, Johnson & Johnson, and I learned how to sell because I went to their sales school within the organization. Mm. So, you know, selling yourself is one of the biggest gifts that you can give yourself. So if you Dale Carnegie classes or something of that sort, uh, I would recommend you take that. They gave us Dale Carnegie when I worked for 3M and Johnson & Johnson. And one of the things that sometimes it's just being able to sell who you are because your authenticity comes through how you speak, how you communicate and how, what your deliverability yes. is. So I'm saying if you could do any kind of training in sales, that is a, that's a great skill set to add on to what you're trying to do in terms of career mentoring and networking. So I think we're going to take one last question and it's related to what you were saying, Marjorie. Yeah, I was um, answering that question. Actually. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. The, the question from Jamal, right? What is yeah, the, the one skill? Anybody else has something to comment? Uh, what is the I one skill that benefited you? Yes. I, you know, also being able to communicate with other people, um, being able to walk into that room and talk, no, no one and talk to everyone. Um, I remember I wanted to go to the FBI National Academy. I had to go to a luncheon and I walked into the room. There was a table here, a table there, and there was people I knew. 
I went and sat down at the table where I knew no one. And it was like full of older white males. And I said, and my friend said, well, why are you sitting at this table? I said, I'm sitting at this table because I need to get to know new people. And I think these are the people that are going to be able to vote for me to be admitted into this academy. And I, I want to talk to them. And before I left, I had all of their cards, all of the information. <laughs> and guess what? I did get into the academy. But you have to be able to know how to work a room. You have yeah. to be able to meet people no matter where you are. I'll, I'll talk to a fly. <laughs> so so let's go around and, and, and end up with this question. What do you think, Catherine? What's what's the one skill that benefited you so far? Uh, I think there is something to be said about collaboration. Um, at NGIT, you know, during my program, I had a lot of different group projects, um, a lot of different, you know, rotating people. You know, you're always working with different personalities. And that's really how it is in the field. You know, you got to be ready to kind of assess personalities, figure out how you're going to get the most out of everybody. What type of, I guess, uh, attention everybody needs is is one person going to be somebody who's going to get the work done without really any type of, uh, you know, you don't need to really stay on them. Or is there somebody else who like they don't necessarily go up to you and ask for help, but would appreciate if you reached out every once in a while. So through the collaborations that I did it with NJIT, I, I increased my ability for, with people, really, and different working relationships with people. That would be the biggest one for me. Uldea? Well, I was that shy, nerdy engineering girl, so I have to say confidence, um, you know, because the truth is, and, and, and reaching out to people and having uh, assertiveness training, because uh, when it comes down to it, like many of us, when you reach out to have mentors, uh, we generally enjoy just using our successes to help someone else uh, show pr their promise and ambition and their own self-esteem and worth. Andrea? <laughs> and I, I'd say being approach, approachable and also the shock factor for me um, because I was not that introverted, shy girl. But when I told everybody what I was studying, it was like, oh, really? So you're <laughs> smart? So piggybacking on that and um, just opening up opportunities, not just for myself, but for others and being very curious, asking a lot of questions. That's that's one of the things that is my takeaway. And there's nothing wrong with inquiring because that's how you learn more and more. And if you don't know something, you know, say, hey, I'll get back to you. Having these little cute cliche phrases is, is always good and you shouldn't feel bad about that either. So again, I would think, you know, being approachable and not necessarily being a people person, as, as others say, but you have to work within your comfort zone. But be yourself. That's that's the most thing to be original. Yep. Be authentic. I think I think Marjorie, you mentioned that before, be authentic. Um, but um, I think our time is up oh, <laughs> and wow. uh, we can just keep going and going. <laughs> Coella, did you did you add um, a comment? I think you, you added a comment for this, right? I know Marjorie started the round. Uh, did you have anything um, else or? Oh no, I'm good. That's that all right. <laughs> so I would like to. This has been a, an amazing experience. I want to thank each one of you here. Um, you guys have done, you know, what many of us dream of, and I'm still dreaming. <laughs> um, and and show us what we can do and what what we can take, you know, um, from from the, our roots at NJIT to to the rest of the world, right? And I do want to give a shout out to everybody that you know that has pride for NJIT, um, because I know for me has opened many doors, and I'm sure for you, if not, you wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so thank you very much for joining us, our panelists. Thank you for um, everybody in the audience. Um, I hope that you took away something, you know, that that will stick with you the rest of uh, your uh, undergraduate career and so on. Rather, you can think back to today, and 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 one of us made a difference. Um, it, this is the first Waves event; it's not the last one. Um, there's there's more to come, you know. Of hopefully, of this caliber, you know, um, continuing, you know, betterment and so on and so forth. So uh, be on the lookout. Um, with, you know, with the NJT uh, networks. Uh, I know that, you know, that there's many ways of getting information now. Um, so just stay current.
one of the things that we all know, right? Stay current. Um, <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> uh, make sure that you check out the Highlander Nation. Nation, I believe that our events uh, will be posted and um, you can stay current, like I said, with any um, other NJT event. Well, again, thank you. Have a blessed night. And Bye. thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. I enjoyed it.